All right, guys, today is Saturday, July 27th. Uh, we're here at the print farm. Um, we're gonna do a quick video today, uh, no vlog today. We're just gonna get straight into the topic of this video and that is printer maintenance. A lot of people ask me what my maintenance schedule is, what it's like, um, do I keep any logs, and how does that look? So currently at the warehouse, we have 127 3D printers. Um, comprised of bamboo A, uh, A1 printers to bamboo P1P, P1S, and X1 carbon printers. So 127 printers in total. And to get right to the answer to that question is, we actually don't have any maintenance schedule. Um, we don't have any logs that we keep updated. We don't have any um, anything, any software management, sophisticated, uh, tools or anything for our printer maintenance um, and honestly like I said the short answer to that question is we don't do any maintenance on any of these printers um, we don't do preventative maintenance I should say we still do maintenance on the printers but what it what it looks like is it kind of looks like this all right so let's start off by saying that my first ever bamboo lab printer was the x1 carbon x1 carbon number one over here I got one X1 Carbon and I got one P1P. These are my first two original bamboo printers that I got back in around July of 2023. Up until that point, I had a print farm primarily of Prusa Mark 3S printers. I got these printers to test out and see how they would, I guess, sort of a stress test on how they would manage printing 24 seven for the things that I was printing at the time. So I got both of these printers. I tested them for about a month before I switched my entire print form over to essentially the P1P printers. I got some additional X1 Carbon printers. Uh, one I got when it was on sale at Micro Center. The other one I got, it was discounted 50% off at Micro Center. I bought it as an open box. A customer returned it. Fortunately for me, I was there at Micro Center that same day and I got this for literally half off and there was no issues with it whatsoever. I think the customer just said that they couldn't get things to stick to the bill plate or something like that. So they returned it. A lot of customers who buy and who are new to 3D printing, who don't know how to do things properly, will just get really frustrated the moment something small happens and they will just return the printers. Uh, luckily for me, I was there, I was able to pick this up. So that's why I still have these three excellent carbons. If I could go back in time, I probably wouldn't have got, I probably wouldn't get X1 Carbons there. I think for what I do, they're overkill. These are, by the way, amazing machines. I highly suggest anybody who's new into 3D printing and who wants to just get one printer who is not on a budget, uh, the X1 Carbon by far, in my opinion, is still one of the best printers on the market. Uh, but anyway, uh, let me get back to the topic. So I tested, and so, the main thing with these printers when they first came out was that it was a closed source system, which meant that the software wasn't open from uh, firmware. Everything was controlled by Bamboo Labs. Even all of their spare parts were only available on their website. So the extruder, all, all the pieces here that if something ever broke, you had to buy directly from Bamboo Labs. And that posed a real issue to the community and also to myself running a print farm. You know, I had 20 of these printers. If I need to order spare parts and they were sold out on the website that I would pretty much be screwed. So again, I tested them for about a month before I bought more P1P printers. And obviously I fell in love with them and I have a whole print farm of bamboo lab printers. Um, but back to the question of maintenance, currently we have 127 3D printers and we do not have any set maintenance schedule at all. Uh, we don't do preventative maintenance. What we do is what's called, I guess, reactive maintenance so essentially what we'll do is we'll wait till a printer typically the only real issues that you have with these printers is a clogged nozzle uh, 90 percent of the issues that we run into is due to clogged nozzles uh, we print with silk pla so it's very prone to clogging and so far this is the only issue that we typically run into previous to the p1p printers when i had the prusas common things that would happen with the prusa mark 3s printers were that the Bed thermistor would wear out, so you would have to replace the, uh, the entire bed thermistor on the Prusa Mark III's. The, both the heat bed and the hot end thermistors would, would go after six months of printing, whatnot. Um, but for, from my experience with these bamboo LED printers, some of these printers I've had over a year, some of them I've had for eight months, and majority of all of these still work perfectly fine without doing any sort of regular maintenance. And 
Regular maintenance, I like cleaning the Z-Rods here, just dusting the, the fan cover, stuff like that. Clean, uh, we don't really do anything. What we do do is when a, when a printer clogs, we'll essentially take it off the shelf and Evan will do, I guess, maintenance on that printer at that time. So he'll pull it off the shelf and then bring it to his desk, which is over here. And we'll do some light, very light and minor maintenance. And so what we'll do is we'll just clean up the Z-Rods here. I don't know if you can see from the, from the light here, but this one has like pretty bad gunk on the Z axis rod here. So we'll clean that out. We'll re-lubricate the Z-Rods. We'll clean out the, we'll clean the, uh, the Z-Rods here. We'll take off the fan cover and we have dusters, like a duster that will just dust inside of the fan. And that's really pretty much it. Uh, we'll clean up the underside of this. And that's, that's really it. There's really nothing else that major that has happened with these printers over the course of the year. The only thing I will say was during Q4 of last year when I had these P1P printers, the only other issue that we ran into was that the extruder gears inside of, um, I don't know if you can see this, but the yellow gears, the yellow gears inside of the extruder kept getting worn out. And the reason for that was that we were printing at ludicrous speeds on these printers. So um, these printers have a setting where you can change the print speed from 100% to, it's called ludicrous, which bumps it up to 166%. So these, during Q4, all the printers were bumped up to 166%. And that really uh, took a toll on the extruder gears. And the extruder gears, the hardened, uh, they were not the hardened steel versions. They were the regular stock versions and those were all degrade very rapidly over time. So over here is our entire, these red bins. This is our spare parts area, pools, and things that we use to fix up the printers. And we try to keep it as organized as possible. Evan has actually done a very, uh, an amazing job here. Spare nozzles for the P1 series and X1 series have all of our uh, spare parts, again, um, thermal grease, needles, those thingamajigs, some more spare, spare parts, a wire brush, things like that. And, and for the most part, we try to keep this stocked as possible. Uh, down here are all of our other spare parts. Uh, we have hot end with steel nozzles. Um, I think these are thermistors. I oh, know this is the extruder gear assembly. Uh, we have heat bed thermistors heat bed signal cables. So all types of uh, stuff here, glue sticks, etc. So this is our maintenance shelf. I think in the future we're going to move this over to Evan's desk over there uh, just because that's where the printers go for sort of uh, maintenance and, and minor, minor maintenance I should say. For us, um, doing maintenance on 127 3D printers, whether it be daily, weekly, or monthly is a lot of work. I don't think we have the manpower currently to set up a maintenance schedule for what we have so that's kind of what we do so this is the process that we do now uh it's been working fine um again you'll see that this printer here is actually clogged so i'll just leave the print here for evan so that he knows that it's clogged he'll take this printer off the shelf bring it to his desk do minor maintenance on this guy we don't actually change out the nozzles because when it's clogged we try to unclog it first see how it, how that goes and then if it continues to clog Continuously, then we'll change out the nozzles. Um, if we see other print degradation issues, uh, we'll look at the extruder gears inside. But these bamboo printers, for what we have them doing and the amount of time these printers are printing, honestly, I can't. It was a, a lot of people in the community weren't sure in the beginning how well these bamboo printers would last in a print farm environment. Um, I'm here to say that they last pretty, pretty well, um, honestly. And, Aside from all the issues I just mentioned above, the only other issue is that the micro SD card that comes with the printers, those are the ones that are typically, th those SD cards are trash. So typically after a month will just die out. Uh, the printer will be unable to read them, they'll be locked. So what we did was uh, I ordered a bunch of SanDisk micro SD cards. So we use these, these guys, sorry, this is not SanDisk. I had my wife buy some micro SD cards from Timu and they came in and they were, uh, they were also trash. I think they were fake. But the SanDisk ones I bought directly from Amazon. These work perfectly fine. And ever, basically whenever the micro SD cards die, we just swap them over to the SanDisk ones and there's really no issues with that. And so I hope this video answers some of the common questions people have about printer maintenance. I know it's not all sunshine and rainbows, but 
that's our process. Another thing is I want to show you guys is that on each of our steel shelves, we have this kit here, a spray bottle with IPA, 99% IPA, microfiber cloth, and Allen keys here, or screw keys. And essentially after every print, we just spray down the bill plate with the IPA, clean it off, and restart the print. Typically that solves 99% of the bed adhesion issues. Um, if we do get constant failures with the prints not sticking, we'll do, we'll, well first what we'll do is we'll flip, we will flip the plate over because these are dual-sided gold PEI sheets. So the other side typically is unused. We'll flip them over if we see that there's continue, continuing issues, we will basically wash. We'll take the bill plate, we'll go to the bathroom. We have a bottle of Dawn dish soap that we use and we lightly scrub that down. And that typically would fix the bed adhesion issues. And if that doesn't work, worst case scenario, we have some spare bed textured PEI sheets that we bought in bulk that are sitting in this corner over here, right down there. So we'll just essentially swap the little plates with the new ones. That's really about it. Hopefully, like I said, this answers some questions that people have about uh, our maintenance schedule or lack thereof, I should say. Uh, maybe in the future when I have more employees or I have more downtime, we can spend a little bit more time on preventative maintenance for these printers. Um, but like I said, for the most part, uh, these printers are just workhorses. They were perfectly fine for some over a year, some for eight months. And I don't suggest you not do maintenance on your printers. If you have a handful of printers, right, maintenance is very important. Uh, just for us at the scale that we're at, uh, it's very hard for just one person to do maintenance. Um, that's almost like a full-time job at this point. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.